welcome back to the news. We have just heard that 50 people have been injured in a Washington unemployment protest. Now, <clears throat> if you want to hear more about this, tune in at 6 30. Now, back to the weather with Professor Ernest Rock. Thanks, Vincent. As reached record temperatures in Antarctica, reaching 50 degrees centigrade. Uh, Professor, I think that's Australia. Oops. As I'll say, record temperatures have been reached. Shut up, Rock. Breaking news! Mussolini has begun preparing the Italian army for an invasion of Abyssinia. Consequently, Haile Selassie, the Abyssinia emperor, has appealed to the League for help. Our expert, Safar Ansari, has more on the story. Thanks, Vincent. I've managed to grab hold of Mr. Jones, a League of Nations ambassador. So, Mr. Jones, firstly, how did this come about? Uh, good morning. Uh, this all came about when, in December 1934, there was a dispute between Italian and Ethiopian for soldiers at the Wall Wall Oasis, which is about 80 kilometers inside Abyssinia. Mussolini took this as his cue and claimed this was actually Italian territory. He demanded an apology and has begun preparing his troops for an invasion. What has the league done to solve this crisis? At the moment, we're trying to negotiate with Mussolini to settle this dispute and they hope that no violence will be required. But we will need the help, obviously, of Britain and France. Are you confident the League can solve this crisis? Definitely. The League is a powerful force and, some, and something that Italy will have to listen to. We will be able to solve this problem peacefully. Well there we have it. Mussolini has tried to claim part of Abyssinia for himself and has started to raise up his powerful army. At this point in time, the League of Nations has failed to stop them, but is trying to negotiate with Mussolini, and they're confident they will be able to solve this crisis peacefully. Back to you, Vincent. Thanks for the report, Zafar. I believe that our reporter, Philip Wong, has more. Do I? Oh yeah, I do. I have been informed by a reliable source that whilst Mussolini was supposedly negotiating with the League, he has been shipping his vast army through the Suez Canal to Africa and whipping up war fever among the Itali Italian people. He is preparing for a full-scale invasion of Abyssinia. Right, well on that rather scary bombshell, it is time for us to say good night. Welcome back to the news, and if you are a Chelsea supporter, then you may want to mute your TV screens as they have lost 1-0 to the Potters on a cold night in Stoke. But now it's time for the weather with Professor Rock. Thanks, Vincent. It has been one of the coldest days in history, with temperatures being... Shut up, Rock! Breaking news! have failed to take Mussolini's actions seriously and have started to play for time. Our expert, Zafar Ansari, had more on this. Thanks, Vincent. I've managed to find Mr. Jones again, who has more ins insider knowledge for us. So, Mr. Jones, why has Britain and France failed to take this seriously? Well, we believe that they are desperate to keep good relations with Mussolini, who has appeared to become the biggest ally against Hitler. They signed an agreement with him early 1935, known as the Streisapart which has formalized a protest, a German rearmament, and a commitment to stand united against Germany. At this meeting, did they mention Abyssinia? No, they neglected to discuss this. This could be because Mussolini made Britain and France turn a blind eye on their exploits in Abyssinia. In return for signing the Stresa Pact. Is there any way that Britain or France could have easily stopped them from Italy from shipping their troops to Africa? Well, obviously. Britain owns the Suez Canal, and they could have closed this, preventing any ships from passing through it. Consequently, Italy won't be able to ship their army to Africa, but they didn't do it as they wanted to keep Italy as their ally. Once again, I will ask you, are you confident you can solve this dispute peacefully? I have 100% confidence that the League will be able to solve this crisis peacefully. Thanks for your time, Mr. Jones. Well, there we have it. Britain and France have turned a blind eye on Mussolini's exploits in Africa, possibly due to the fact that he signed the Stress Pact with them. Also, Britain could have closed the Suez Canal, but didn't, leading us to believe that they did this to keep Italy as an ally, but the League of Nations is still confident they can solve this dispute peacefully. Back to you, Vincent. 
As for that report, Zafar, I believe Professor Philip Huang has more. I think we're on. There has been a public outcry against Italy's behaviour. Consequently, a ballot has taken place by the League of Nations Union in Britain. The results show that the majority of British people supported the use of military force to defend Abyssinia if necessary. Moreover, at the recent League Assembly, the British Foreign Minister made a grand speech about the value of collective security. There was much talking and negotiating, but the League never actually discouraged Mussolini. Thanks for that, Philip. And on that rather alarming bombshell, it is time for us to say good night. Welcome back to the news. The Ford automobile company has lost over 50% of the price of its stocks, the lowest price in its history. But more on that story later, as it is time for the weather with Professor Rock. Thanks, it's in a very temperate day. Shut up, Rock! Every day. Shut up, Rock! Shut up, Rock! Every day. Shut up, Rock! Every day. Shut up, Rock! Ah! Breaking news! Mussolini has launched a full-scale invasion of Abyssinia. Despite brave resistance, the Abyssinians were no match for the modern Italian army, equipped with tanks, aeroplanes, and poison gas. This was a clear-cut case of a large, powerful state attacking a smaller one. Our expert, Zafar Ansari, has more. Thanks, Vincent. I've managed to make contact once again with Mr. Jones, who has some very exciting news for us. So, Mr. Jones, why has the League failed to act? I have nothing to say. Nothing to say about the entire incident? Nothing, nothing. I have nothing to say. Nothing to say about Britain and France not coming to Abyssinia's aid? Nothing to say. I have nothing to say. Nothing to say about the League not having its own dedicated army? I have nothing to say. I'm so sorry. I have nothing to say. Do you not think it's time to have a chat to all the viewers just to tell them what's going on? The viewers are not stupid. We hear they're desperate to know what's going on inside the League. The viewers are not stupid. You said before this event that you weren't worried. Are you a little bit more worried now? No. Worried about what? The League's future, your position in the League, and the whole world's well-being? No. Nothing about the events at all? Not at all. No individual performance you'd like to pick out? No. And nothing about what's going to happen in the future? Nothing. Nothing about what's going to fix this? I cannot say. Thank you for your time, Mr Jones. Thank you. Well, that was Mr Jones, and he had nothing to say. Well, thanks for that insightful interview so far. I believe that even Professor Rock could give us more information about the event. But first, it's time for Philip Wong. Yes, I do. I believe that this shows a weakness in the League, as this was exactly the sort of dispute the League was made to solve. They were ideally placed to act and show the world how strong and how powerful the League of Nations had become. This was a serious issue as well. The League of Nations covenant made it clear that sanctions must be introduced against Italy. A committee was immediately set up to agree what sanctions should be imposed, but they knew that they had to be made swiftly and decisively if they were to succeed. The League imposed an immediate ban on arms sales to Italy while allowing them to Abyssinia. It banned all loans to Italy and banned all imports to Italy, and it prevented the export to Italy of rubber, tin, and metals. However, the League delayed a decision for two months over whether to ban oil exports to Italy, as they feared that the Americans would not supp support the sanctions and that their members and, th and that their members' economic state would be damaged further. Despite the sanction, they did not make Italy's conquering of they did not make Italy's conquering of Abyssinia was not particularly disrupted, as they didn't close the Suez Canal. Closing that would have ended Mussolini's Abyssinia campaign very quickly. Back to you, Vincent. Thanks for the bomb, and on that rather intriguing bombshell, it is time for us to say good night. Welcome back to the news, and reports are now coming in that Lloyd Sugar has apparently fired himself in a hit TV series, The Apprentice. Our TV correspondent, Tim Roberts, has Well, it looks as though someone must have fired a cameraman as well. 
So let's move on to the weather with Professor Rob. Thanks, Vincent. It's going to be um, one of the most. Oh. 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 Breaking news. Italy has finally conquered Abyssinia. I report the far Ansari has mourned this. Thanks, Vincent. Mussolini has now taken the capital of Abyssinia, Addis Ababa has forced Heli Selassie into exile. Moreover, Mussolini has formally annexed the entire country. This is a clip which was broadcasted nationwide shortly after Mussolini had taken control of Abyssinia. Mwahaha! I've shown that I am more powerful than the League. They can never stop me. I will rebuild the entire Roman Empire and make Italy the most powerful nation once again. This starts here in Abyssinia and finishes with the world. This clearly shows Mussolini's intentions and should make us all feel worried. Thanks for that report so far. Philip Wong has more. Yes, and it is not good. This event could lead to the end of the league as it just watched helplessly. Collective security had, has been shown up as an empty promise. The league has well and truly failed. Also, Britain and France are now in a weak position as Mussolini and Hitler have just signed an agreement of their own called the Rome-Berlin Axis. This has, been a, had, this, had, this has had serious effect on world peace, and now it is unlikely ever to be the same again. And on that scary bombshell, it is time for us to say good night. <laughs>